Hey guys, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I'm Mitch, and today I'm going to do another sunset swipe, this time over one that I've already attempted and I'm not happy with the result. So I'd much rather pour over it and reuse the canvas than just chuck the canvas out. So let's go down onto the bench and start pouring. So this is the canvas that I had previously and my swipe attempt did not work out. Um, it's got some really nice details in there, like this part looks gray when you're looking at it, but when you tilt it to the side, it does have a lot of color in there, but it's not the color that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to pour over it. So this is some pillow paint that I had mixed up from my previous two sunset pours. And I'm just going to cover my canvas with that. I'm not going to overdo it because with swipes, uh, you don't need as much pillow paint on there. So the colors I am going to use are my Matisse Southern Ocean Blue mixed with Pebeo Iridescent Blue Green and this little piggy Lakeside. So if you're interested in doing the Shelly Art Bloom technique like I'm doing today, uh, you can do that at shellyart.com.au. And if you're interested in buying any of the little piggy pigments that I'm using today, you can get them at fluid-art.co. Also, if you're going to do the Shelly Art course, use my discount code SHELLYART15MGRIMER for a 15% discount, which is really nice and handy. And if you're interested in that, I would advise doing that now as there is an updated course coming out in the near future and the price will be going up. All members that are currently in the course will gain access to the new one retrospectively. Uh, so get it while it's at the cheaper price, why not? So I've got those two colors. I've also got Pebeo Iridescent Blue Green here. Okay, this color is amazing. It looks blue under certain lights and then aqua or teal under others. Then I have this little piggy king of pain. This is a new color coming out on the 3rd of August. Just going to put a little bit of that as an accent color. So it's good to have highlights and low lights in your pores. So if you can put in a dark color and a like a really dark color and a really light color, that will give a lot of detail and a lot of dimension to your pore. Then I have Matisse Dioxazine Purple. I'm just going to use a little bit of this because it does tend to take over a lot. Then I have this little piggy Groovy. I'm not going to include red, yellow and orange in this one. I'm just going to have a play around and see what I can get with the pinks and the blues. Got this little piggy pinwheel. This little piggy Venus. I'm really going to layer this on. Venus is another new color coming out. Again, 3rd of August for that release. This little piggy watermelon, another new one. And finally on top, this little piggy macaw. This is a indigo to gold color shift interference pigment. Okay. And then we're going to get our swipe tool ready. So for this one, I think I'm just going to use my smaller swipey. So for this one, I'm just going to use my smaller swipey. This one is a Liquitex number one, I think it is. It's this shape. And I'm going to layer on my Atelier Titanium White, a nice thin layer. I found out my problem is I put too much cell activator on and it creates mud. 
on the canvas. And lastly, we're going to put on our Payne's Gray Cell Activator. Okay, and let us swipey swipe. Okay. Not too shabby. Let's center it over this way a little bit and bring it down. Just trying to expand those cells a little before I spin. Okay. And because this is a heart shape, we're going to lose a little bit in the middle of the heart, that's fine, and I'm going to torch lightly to get rid of some of these bubbles. Very lightly. And I will pop some of these as well, some of the more noticeable ones. I'm not too fussed by bubbles in my pores these days, but a lot of people are. I'm just going to spin that out. Okay, really happy with this. You can see the macaw shimmering on top. It's doing its job. And I think I'm gonna call this done. Let me just see if there's enough paint off in the center. I've just blown over the surface to pop some of those bubbles. They are going to pop naturally. And if they don't, they will dry and give the surface a bumpy texture. So I really whipped up my paints before I poured. So that's why I've got a lot of these measles coming through. But again, I'm not fussed by them. They don't really worry me all that much. I think this one turned out pretty good. So let's go down for a close-up and see what we've got. And that is another bloom swipe uh, with a sunset sort of theme, the blues and the pinks. And I'm really happy with how this one's turned out, much better than what was on there before. So uh, yeah, great way to reuse canvases. The bloom technique is probably the last layer that you want to put on a canvas if you're redoing it. So if you want to recycle a Dutch pour or a flip cup, something like that. Um, I don't advise pouring over blooms. Every time I've done that, uh, I've had really bad cracking issues. And it's just because the gloss paints here in Australia tend to not like each other. They will repel each layer. So while the layer on top will set and it will dry, uh, I have had paintings where I could literally just peel that layer straight off and see the, the pore underneath undamaged. Uh, so be very interested to see how this one dries. And if it dries well, this one will get a coat of varnish. I think it deserves varnish, this one. So if you're liking what I'm doing, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. See ya.